Dear students, today we will discuss about internet architecture. We will discuss that, for example, you have a computer or laptop which is, for example, in Lahore, Pakistan, and you want to communicate with your friend who is residing in Germany. So, what would be the process? How your messages are transferred and transmitted to that particular user which is residing at Germany? And what is the architecture that is helping your messages to be transmitted over there and their messages to be transmitted to yourself? Before going into this discussion, I also want to make sure that the difference between internet and the internet. So, the internet which is written with small i and the internet that is written with the big i, capital I. So, small i internet is network of networks of computers, normally each network following different topology. So, for example, you have different networks and those have different topologies and you are connecting all of those networks to form a network. That network will be called internet, small i, internet. However, when we call internet with the capital I, that means it is a specific worldwide network of networks of computers. And here we will be discussing the architecture of internet, the internet with capital I. This one. So, internet was started as a research effort in 1960s and the goal was to link variety of networks of the uh, globe, the world and to connect them properly, efficiently, reliably that they can communicate with each other. And this started as a government project by Defense Advanced Research Project Agency that is also known as DARPA. And this shifted from government sponsored project to academic research afterwards. And today it is a commercial undertaking linking personal area networks, local area networks, metropolitan area networks and wireless area networks involving million and billion of computers around the world. So, what is the internet architecture? Individual networks are managed by internet service provider. You might have heard about internet service provider. For example, you are taking services of some ISP, like either you are taking services from PTCL in Pakistan, you are taking internet services from Y Tribe, you are taking services for example, from some other agency like uh, Nayatel, or you are taking uh, sometime not the internet, you are taking cable kind of connections from different service providers. So, all of such type of service providers are called internet service providers. Those provide services to individual users, and there is a hierarchy of ISPs in the world to make the proper architecture of the internet. So, here is the internet composition. We as a user, we are relying over here. So, this is the point where you are and you are connecting with access ISP which is the service provider, the cable operators are PTCL, Y-Tribe, Neatel, so all of such service providers. And then those are connected with tier 2 ISPs and then tier 1 ISPs. So, we will be going into details of each one by one. So, starting from tier 1 ISPs, so these are relatively few high speed, high capacity internet wireless area networks. And they are thought as backbone of the internet. And those are operated by large companies who normally originated uh, from the telephone companies and then extended into the internet business. And then tier 2 ISPs are connected with tier 1 ISPs. They are more regional in scope. 
they are not worldwide and they are relatively less strong than tier 1 isp however tier 1 and tier 2 isps are network of routers forming the core of the internet and then tier 3 or access isp are the independent internet sometimes referred to intranet operated by a single authority like cable and telephone companies which we have discussed and then devices connecting to these isps are called the end systems and the host so the end systems are not only the computers those could be laptops telephones video cameras automobiles home appliances and many more and this has given an basically uh, uh, research trends in internet of things iot's which are very hot topics nowadays and which are reading uh, basically uh, readings uh, from different automobiles home appliances video cameras and then making informed decisions based on the information provided by those different uh, hosts and then the area within the access point a group of access points range is often called the hotspot and you might have also used hotspot of your uh, smartphone sometimes so if we summarize today's module we have learned about internet architecture we have learned the difference between internet with small i and the internet with capital i we have learned about architecture in tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 isps and the end systems which are connected using those top tier hierarchical architecture of internet service providers whether they are in tier 1 tier 2 or tier 3 architectures